original nightmare Coming out in the night air Fall asleep and I'm right there When your mind's eye, if you die there Then your mind, boy, I don't fight there You think I'm terrified of right here? 27 years, you'll be asleep Me, I'll be creeping up in your dreams It's a long time, I am relentless At best, you're an apprentice Taking your appendix, give you tetanus And a setback, and I help you I am reckless, and death is infectious Punch you when you're precious Next time, and leave you breathless Ooh, what a bad boy Scare Pennywise, bad choice Hot you out in broad daylight Show you nightmares to your pale white Like me, I don't need sleep Send you six feet deep, clean sweep But your peeps when I see deeply Till I find any fear you need And I'll use that, and abuse that One fact to your mind, bruise cracks In the fragments to your stagnant And you can't move, it's entrapment of your mind At any time, got a small time frame Any crime gonna happen Then I'll disappear to the darkness Come and visit here <laughs> It's a battle, battle for your nightmares Scared, leave you rattled Hide now and recite prayers Can you hide? No Can you run? No Nowhere you can go Death knocking at your door This is a battle, battle for your nightmares Scared, leave you rattled Hide now and recite prayers Can you hide? No Can you run? No Nowhere you can go Death knocking at your door World, you're a jester, just a copy. I'm the man, take visionary and inventor. Of your worst fears coming in. Ha! Clown head, meet the blade head, cutting through your head to the ray bands. What kind of killer only kills children? Easy targets, what a villain. Who are they more afraid of? Just a little clown with some makeup? My face is the real fear. Done this eight times and I'm still here. I am legend, get your weight up. I'm the reason those kids stay up. They would rather see you raise up than me, cause they'll never wake up. Eight times, huh? What an embarrassment. If you were intelligent, you would just stop. By the comparison, never been caught. That's kind of embarrassing. Eyes for hands? Wow. So unoriginal for such a mythical criminal. Minimal thought? Really, it's quizzical. You could have brought anything that you know. That all you got? Really, so typical. Jason Myers, you, your ever so pitiful, really. I am the pinnacle. Making those dairy kids miserable. Watch and learn. I shock and burn and fold my prey and watch them turn. The town ignores. They're not concerned. I'll kill them all. They never learn. <laughs> this is a battle. Battle for your nightmares Scared, leave you rattled Hide now and recite prayers Can you hide? No Can you run? No Nowhere you can go Death knocking at your door This is a battle Battle for your nightmares Scared, leave you rattled Hide now and recite prayers Can you hide? No Can you run? No Nowhere you can go Conventional wisdom has it that the Grail bloodline is sacred because it came from Christ, a man still considered by much of the world to be the true son of God. And yet the dynasty of kings who descended from this bloodline were known as sorcerer kings, some of whom hinted or even stated outright that they were in fact descendants of Lucifer. A number of authors claim this thesis is true, but they are predominantly hardcore Christian conspiracy theorists and stop well short of explaining why they believe this, or of giving any tangible details to substantiate their claims. Says one, in typical Gnostic fashion, descendants of the Merovinans claim to have the blood of both Christ and Satan in their veins. Given the fact that this theme, or a variation of it, recurs with some regularity, and given that it would appear to be consistent with the sort of dual vibe which permeates the saga of this bloodline, I began to wonder if there might not be some traditions from which such a notion could have arisen. At length, several were discovered. Firstly, let's remember that this bloodline descended from a figure who equates with the biblical Cain. In certain rabbinic law, we come across the very interesting notion that Cain was not the son of Adam, but of Samael. <laughs> Thank you.
It was thought that when Samael appeared to Eve as a serpent, he seduced her. The fruit of that union was Cain. Now Samael was a fallen angel, essentially the Judaic Lucifer. If the Merovinans knew of this version of the story, which they no doubt did, and believed it, it could be the basis of their alleged assertion that they possessed the blood of both Christ and Lucifer. An alternate version of the Cain saga, equally Luciferian in its connotations, says that he was the son of Adam's first wife, Lilith. She had been the consort of God before coming to earth as a fallen angel. The full details of her story are probably too well known to bear repeating here, but it's interesting that of the two alternate traditions concerning Cain's parentage, both involve the Luciferian Nephilim bloodline. Also of interest is the fact that the lily is known to have taken its name from Lilith, and the heraldic device emblematic of this bloodline is the fleur de lis, widely accepted as symbolic of the lily, could not this symbol, viewed within this context, in fact be the flower of Lilith? The Lilith, say male connection is also pertinent in regard to the Grail saga insofar as the two have a son of their own who seems to play a recurring role in the whole mythos, Asmodeus. Not only is Asmodeus the dominant image, shown mirroring Christ, in Ren Le Chateau, he is said to have played the central role in building the Temple of Solomon, the edifice from which the Knights Templar took their name. The recurrence of this strange figure in Grail law has long perplexed observers, yet it would appear that both he and the descendants of Cain may in fact have shared a kindred ancestry. It is even said in some traditions that it was Asmodeus whom Moses called upon to part the Red Sea, and not God. Though portrayed as a demon or devil figure, his name reveals that he may not always have been viewed as such, for Asmodeus translates simply to the Lord God, Ashma equals Lord, and Deus equals God. Another possible genesis of the idea of a Luciferian bloodline may have come from the Elohim, who in the Bible say, let us make man in our image. Elohim is generally thought to be a plural of God, or to be the gods. But it is also widely believed to denote the Nephilim, the fallen angels known as the Watchers in the Book of Enoch. It is believed that the word Elohim comes from the much more ancient Babylonian word Elu, which means shining ones. This phrase has a distinctively Luciferian connotation, because the name Lucifer literally means light bearer, and the descendants of Cain, who were the deified kings of Sumeria, bore the title of Ari, a term which also meant shining ones. The Sumerian pictogram for Ari is an inverted pentagram, a symbol long associated with Lucifer. And the phrase shining ones would be a very apt description for the descendants of Enoch's fallen angels, who were said to have hair white as snow, pale eyes, and pale skin which seemed literally to glow and fill the room with light. The Sumerian Ara are almost always depicted as wearing crowns bearing horns, and some of their descendants were said actually to have had horns. For instance, the most famous statue of Moses, that of Michelangelo, depicts him with horns atop his forehead, not wholly inappropriate for someone who may be a blood relation of Osmodeus. Theologians protest that they are not horns, merely rays of light but even rays of light suggest a Luciferian subtext. Alexander the Great declared himself the son of God, and he too was said to have horns. In fact, to this very day, if you talk to people on the streets of Iran, who remember his invasion as though it happened last week, they will tell you in all solemnity that it's a historical fact that Alexander had horns, which he wore his hair long to cover up. In closing, we note the fact that Cain seems to have engendered his own tradition, as evidenced in a strange Gnostic sect called the Cainites. Like the Carpocratines, the Cainites believed that no one could be saved except by making the journey through everything. Epiphanius describes them as a group consecrating lustful or illegal acts to various heavenly beings as a sort of sacrament. Interestingly, many scholars compare them to Satanists. The extent to which the Merovinans knew of these alternate traditions is uncertain. Whether or not they believed in them is more uncertain still, yet it remains likely that they both knew about these traditions and took them quite seriously. To this very day, the coat of arms of the capital of the Merovinan Empire, Sten, 
bears an image of the devil. And the original name of Stin was Satanicum.